anyone beside the, outside of the Bible who can tell us John Gospel is written by John? Well, for example, Irenaeus of Lyon. Okay, who is Irenaeus? Irenaeus was one of the church fathers in the late second century. Okay. Irenaeus was a disciple of Polycarp of Smyrna, yeah. and Polycarp of Smyrna was a disciple of John. John. So we've got the narration from Irenaeus to go to a pol Polycarp, and then goes back, take us back to John Gospel. Yeah, back okay. to John the Apostle. Yeah. And when is the date? When is the date for um, Irenaeus? Irenaeus. He's in the late second century. Late second century. It couldn't be clearer. For Irenaeus, the one true God is not the Trinity, not a triune God. Irenaeus is not a Trinitarian, but he is a Unitarian. Irenaeus was Bishop of Lyon in present-day France at the end of the 100s. He was a disciple of Polycarp, who was a disciple of Papias, who was a disciple of the Apostle John. Much of what we know about varieties of ancient Gnostic Christianity come from his writings. He argues correctly that they were unfaithful to the apostolic witness on many key points, to put it mildly. <laughs> Who, according to Irenaeus, is the one true God, the Trinity or the Father of Jesus? Let's listen to him. Quote, Wherefore, I do also call upon thee, Lord God of Abraham and God of Isaac and God of Jacob and Israel, who art the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God who, through the abundance of thy mercy, hast had a favor toward us, that we should know thee, who hast made heaven and earth, who rulest over all, who art the only and the true God, above whom there is no other God. Grant by our Lord Jesus Christ the governing power of the Holy Spirit. Give to every reader of this book to know thee, that thou art God alone, to be strengthened in thee, and to avoid every heretical and godless and impious doctrine. Later in the book, Irenaeus says, Neither the prophets, nor the apostles, nor the Lord Christ in his own person did acknowledge any other Lord or God, but the God and Lord supreme. The prophets and the apostles confessing the Father and the Son, but naming no other as God, he means than the Father, and confessing no other as Lord, he means than the Son. And the Lord himself, in other words, Jesus, handing down to his disciples that he, the Father, is the only God and Lord, who is God and ruler of all. It is incumbent on us to follow, if we are their disciples indeed, their testimonies to this effect. Jesus did not declare to them another God besides him who made the promise to Abraham. There is therefore one and the same God, the Father of our Lord, who also promised through the prophets that he would send his forerunner, he means John the Baptist, uh, and his salvation, that is the word, he caused to be made visible to all flesh, the word himself being made incarnate, end quote. It couldn't be clearer, for Irenaeus, the one true God, is not the Trinity, not a triune God, but rather the Father of Jesus, just like the New Testament says. But isn't the Son, for Irenaeus, equally divine with the Father? No. According to Irenaeus, the Father knows more than the Son knows and is greater than the Son. Listen to him argue against certain Gnostics. He says, quote, But beyond reason, inflated with your own wisdom, you presumptuously maintain that you are, you are acquainted with the unspeakable mysteries of God, while even the Lord, the very Son of God, allowed that the Father alone knows the very day and hour of judgment when he plainly declares... But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, neither the Father but the Son only. He says, The Son was not ashamed to ascribe the knowledge of that day to the Father only. If anyone should acquire the reason why the Father, who has fellowship with the Son in all things, has been declared by the Lord alone to know the hour and the day of judgment, he will find at present no more suitable or becoming or safe reason than this, since indeed the Lord is the only Master that we may learn through him that the Father is above all things. For the Father, he says, is greater than I. The Father, therefore, has been declared by our Lord to excel with respect to knowledge. For this reason, that we too, as long as we are connected with the scheme of things in this world, should leave perfect knowledge 
and such questions as have been mentioned to God and should not by any chance while we seek to investigate the sublime nature of the Father fall into the danger of starting the question whether there is another God above God. End quote. Sometimes in his arguments against the Gnostics, Irenaeus pauses to cite a common creed, presumably baptismal creeds, at any rate summaries of belief which he says are used by Catholic Christians in the late 100s. Here is one of them. The rule of truth which we hold is that there is one God Almighty who made all things by his word and fashioned and formed out of that which has no existence all things which exist. The Father made all things by him. For God needs none of these things, but is he who, by his word and spirit, makes and disposes and governs all things and commands all things into existence. He who formed the world is the God of Abraham, above whom there is no other God. He is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. End quote. For Irenaeus, the Father and the one God, and the God of Abraham are one and the same. The word, that is for him the pre-human Jesus, and the Spirit are his instruments in the creation and governance of the cosmos. But the ultimate source of all else, including these two instruments, is God, that is, the Father. These three are nowhere said by Irenaeus to be or to compose the one true God, nor are they equally divine. The Father is divine in a way in which nothing else is. Irenaeus is not a Trinitarian, but he is a Unitarian. <clears throat> 